Hi guys, this is Edward and welcome to the 8th video tutorial of creating a Flappy Bird game with Godot. On this video we're going to be working on the medals that display when we get a certain amount of points. Without further ado, let's get into it. The first thing we have to do is define the value of each medal. And I think that the game script is a good place to do it. So let's go to the game script. And in here I'll declare four constants. One name medal bronze equals to 10. Other one medal silver equals to 20. The next one medal gold equals to 30. And the last one medal platinum equals to 40. Having defined this variable, now we just have to create the node that will display the medals. So let's go to the 2D view and under the text panel score node, I'm going to add a texture frame. I'll name it text medal. And this node is going to display a sprite based on the last score, but just to see what we are doing, I'll assign a sprite. So I'm going to load the sprite medal bronze. Let's resize it so it fits the size of the sprite. And I'll place it right here where it is supposed to be. Let's add a built in script. And I'll name it text medal. I'll remove what we don't need. And before anything else, we will create a few constants that are going to contain the sprites of each medal. So I'll declare a constant name spear medal bronze equals to preload, and we will pass the path of the sprite, which is in the sprites folder under the name medal bronze.png. The next one is going to be spear medal silver, which is in the same folder under the name metal silver that png and it'll be the same for the other two medals but with their respective names now that we have all the sprites we need let's go to the 2d view and we want to display a medal once this node the edge boss score last has finished counting and on the previous tutorial, on this node, we created a signal name counting finished, so this will be quite simple. Let's go back to the text medal scripts, and in the ready function, we will look for the Xbox as called last using use that get my node that find node Xbox score last. And if we found it, we will connect the signal counting finished to this self node. To the function show medal, which I will create down here. And in this function, we will have a variable named texture equals to null, which you can also name sprite if you want to. And at the end of this function, if texture has a value difference of null, we will set the texture to the value the variable contains. And we will also call the function show since this node is supposed to be hidden unless it has a metal to show. And to make sure that is the case, I will call the function hide in the ready function. So after declaring the variable texture, we will ask if game dot score current is bigger or equals to game dot metal bronze. And if it's so, we will set texture equals to spear metal bronze. Down below we will ask if game that is called current is bigger or equals to game that is called silver. And if it's so, we will set texture equals to spear metal silver. And it will be the same for the other two medals. So let's say that our score is 35, and each of these if are looking for a value equals or bigger to 10, 20. 30 and 40. When this function gets called, the texture will be bronze, then it will change to silver, then to gold, and since it's not bigger than 40, it's going to skip this step. And at the end of this function, the final value is the one that matters. There are of course other ways to do the same, but this one is simple 
easy to understand and it gets the job done. Let's try it out what we have done so far. And to make the process of testing easier, I will go back to the game script and I will change these values to 1, 2, 3 and 4. Let's give it a shot. And if I don't get any points, no medal shows up. If I get one, we get a bronze medal. With two points, a silver medal. With three points, the gold one. And finally with four points or more, a platinum one. Now the game goes a little bit further in making the medal stand out by making the spark shine on the medal. So we'll have to do that as well. In text medal, let's add an animated sprite node and rename it a spear spark. Let's assign a new sprite frames and edit it. And I will add here the spark 0, 1 and 2. Now they have changed the sprite frame editor in this version, so now we can create a simple animation here, but I want to use it. I'm going to add an animation player node, and I'll rename it Anim. Let's create a new animation named Shine, and at time 0, in the spark node, I'll add a key for the frame property with a value of 0. Hit create to make a new track. At time 0.1, I will add another key with the value of 1. At time 0.2, another key with the value of 2. At time 0.3, a key with the value of 1. And finally, at time 0.4, a key with the value of 0. Let's set the length to 0.5 and enable looping. So we have the animation looking like so. And I think that is actually a little bit too fast. So I will set the speed to 0 0.8. And it's now looking like so. Now at the end of the animation, we want the spark to appear on another random place. And we will have to do that from a script and make it happen from this animation by calling a function. And since we are on the animation, I'll do that first. So I'll add a call function track for the spark node. And at sign 0.5 add a key. And the function we want to call is going to be named to random boss. This function of course doesn't exist yet, we have to create it. I'll close the animation panel. And let's add a build scene script and name it spear spark. I'll delete what we don't need. And let's create the function to random boss. And this is how we'll randomly move this node. We have already the medal along with the spark being animated. The simplest way to randomly move it is by setting its X position to a random number from 0 to the width of the medal. And the same for Y but using the medal height. And that will give us a range like this. And every time the animation calls the function to random pause, the spark will move. But the problem with this is that we have these blank spaces where the spark shouldn't appear. Now, this is of course not really an issue, and for what I have seen, this is how the original game does it. But this is something that is actually easy to address. So we'll have the medal and the spark. But we will use this equation instead. Given the radius of a circle and the cosine of an angle, we can get the x position. And the same for the y axis, but using sine. We already know the radius of the medal, since it's just half of its size, and the angle will be a random angle in radians. If we use it just like this in the random position function, this is what we have, which is not quite what we are looking for. And the spark is actually appearing on a circle, but really out of place. And that is simple because the medal is a texture frame, and their origin is at the top left corner. So we just have to add an offset to the equation, 
which in this case happens to be the same radius of the metal, and we will have it now like this. Now we can just leave it like that and it will look pretty cool, but we can go a little bit further and I will show you how down here. Instead of showing a constant radius, we can use a random one, a radius from zero to the metal radius, and we will have it like so. So now that we know what we are looking for, back to the editor. Let's first declare a constant name metal radius equals to 11, which is half of the size of the metal sprite. And on the to random pause function, I'm going to declare a variable name random angle equals to random range from 0 to 360. And the angle has to be in radians, so I'm going to wrap this value in the function degrees to radians. We'll also need a radius, so let's create another variable name random radius equals to random range from 0 to metal radius. And now for the position we'll create a variable name x equals to random radius multiplied by cosine of random angle. For y it'll be random radius multiplied by sine of random angle. And let's not forget we have to add an offset since the origin of the texture frame is at the top left corner. So I'll add metal radius in both axes. And finally we're going to set that position by creating a new vector 2 with x and y. Now the animation is never been played and we want it to start when the text metal node shows up. So I'm going to create a signal name shown which we will emit right here. And back to the Spark script in ready we're going to get the text metal node by using get parent. And from it we'll connect the signal shown to the animation node by saying get node anim to the function play. And this function is asking us for the name of the animation we want to play. And we can pass arguments to the connectx function in an array. In this case it will be the name shine which is the name of the animation. And I also want the spark to always start at a random position. So in ready, I'll call the function to random boss. Let's give it a shot. And there we have it. Well guys, this is gonna be it for this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. And if you have, make sure to share it with other people and to subscribe to this channel so you can know when I upload new videos. I also want to say thanks to all my Patreon that support me. It really means a lot. And until next time, see you later.